Hello and welcome back. I'm Christine Carrado. With me right now is Dr. Chris Burns, CEO at Novonics. Dr. Burns, great to see you. How are you? Great. Thanks, Christine. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. If you would just start us off with telling us a bit more about the company. Sure. Novonics is a diversified battery technology and materials company. Our primary activities are in using our proprietary R&D technologies and advanced prototyping and development to develop mainstream materials needed for the battery sector. And our focus is really on long life, high performance cathode and anode materials that are going to support the electric vehicle and energy storage uh, markets, because that is where the huge growth is that we're going to see over, over the next decade and beyond in the lithium ion battery space. So what do those raw materials actually consist of that you're developing? So the most common chemistry move used in, in many of these cells is a nickel manganese cobalt or nickel cobalt aluminum cathode material paired with a graphite or graphite blended with a little bit of silicon anode material. So our primary, uh, our first business unit that's going through a commercial phase now is our pure graphite business and it's commercializing a synthetic graphite product it's been qualified by Samsung and is under contract to be supplied to Samsung starting the coming months. And that's really our, our first product that we brought to market and proved that this graphite can outperform others on the market. And with some of our new research and development activities, we developed technology around these high nickel cathode materials and ways to manufacture them at a lower cost as well. So all of, we're working on those key materials in the anode and cathode space and really working on the process improvements to drive the cost down, which is what we need for, for cheaper you know, batteries that will drive more adoption. Besides Samsung, which is obviously a huge one, who are your other customers? Right now, for we have a, a huge number of customers across the industry that come to us for our research and development services, our uh, testing equipment technologies, our prototyping and testing services. And those range everywhere from major cell manufacturers, including Samsung, uh, across the OEMs, consumer electronics, auto, and research institutes. On our materials side, Samsung is our first uh, contracted customer. We have a MOU in place with Sanyo, which is a division of Panasonic, to evaluate the mass production samples next of our, of our synthetic grade graphite. And then we'll be looking to build from there. But what you have to realize is being in the material space and especially outside of Asia, there's really only a handful of key customers, really only a handful of major cell manufacturers that we want to contract large volumes with. Yeah, we did see California say last month they would end the sale of new gasoline and diesel powered passenger cars by 2035. So are you seeing more automakers producing those battery cells on their own or looking at outside vendors like yourself? I think, um, so, I mean, I think that's a great step, right, toward this decarbonization that society needs. And, and vehicles are this first step that we're going to see through the course of this decade. And then energy storage, will see a huge shift beyond that. And so uh, the automakers, this has been a, a, a long time coming, so to speak. And so you've seen major investments and announcements outside of Asia and U.S. and Europe between uh you know, Volkswagen, BMW, Daimler, investing much more in their internal capabilities and also establishing partnerships with uh, cell manufacturers. So Tesla, you know, if you consider them an auto OEM is really the unique one in that sense where they've said, we will build our own batteries in Berlin. Most of the other, you know, existing automakers are partnering with um, battery manufacturers because that is the key technology. And you may see them shift to vertically integrate in the future, but right now they're looking to those cell manufacturers and also looking to that material supply chain, which is where we sit. Well, for yourself, what does the plan look like to scale? I know that you recently raised $63 million in equity. So what are you using that towards? Yeah, that raise was really a repositioning of the business. It cleaned up our balance sheet, eliminated all of our debt and put significant cash in the bank to really fund this phase one growth of our pure graphite business, as well as invest further in our, our product pipelines, such as our cathode technology. So the primary use is to take pure graphite up from the 500 ton run rate to a 2000 ton per year run rate, 
that's really to get ahead of what we expect in future demand because it will take us time to put uh, additional infrastructure on the ground to increase our manufacturing throughput. And our 500 ton starter contract with Samsung, we expect to be able to deliver on and renew to larger volumes. And we're ready to start making that investment now and also so we can serve other customers. So that investment really gets us to a point where we uh, take pure graphite to a, a healthy cash flow positive state and can fund future uh, expansion on debt because it will be on the back of you know large contracts with tier one suppliers, uh, tier one customers, and as well invest in some of our R and D pipeline so we can look to develop new materials and continue to help drive cost out of the material supply chain. Well, what kind of demand are you expecting? Our, our growth plans with Pure Graphite are broken into three phases. So this first phase that we've funded now is to 2,000 tons per year. And then we expect our plans are to go to 25,000 tons in phase two by 2025 and to 100,000 tons by the end of the decade. And of course, those timetables may become accelerated because the demand in the industry is going to be far higher than that. So at um, by 2030, many people have the number just shy of a million tons of required uh, graphite material. So talking about 100,000 tons is, is not saying we're trying to take the lion's share. We're just trying to be a real participant in the market. And our positioning that, that really helps that and our timing is that, you know, now we have a qualified product we can supply outside of Asia. And of course, uh, China currently supplies about 80% of this material to the market. And the past year has highlighted, you know, the risks in, in foreign dependency on supply. And of course, the United States is making huge pushes to domestic manufacturing and domestic supply of critical minerals. And President Trump just signed an executive order at the end of September, again, reiterating uh, synthetic graphite for batteries as one of these key materials that needs to be developed in the United States. Before I let you go separately, the company did upgrade to the OTC QX market. What kind of value have you seen from, from having a presence there? I think it's a really important step in our business, right? Uh, we, we've been listed on the ASX from a number of years as the company transitions really from a company looking to explore uh, the mining space into this technology company and all of our operations are North American and, and we look, we'll be looking to expand to Europe. But uh, so this shift is giving us a, a point where we can start to attract shareholder base from North America, uh, not just our existing shareholder base out of Australia. And really, even over the past six months, we've seen that um, as our uh, as I've, our register count has increased from a couple thousand to to ten to fifteen thousand. And so the future of the business is really founded in North America, and so we're establishing that presence so we can. Uh, have participation in the stock from here. Chris, super interesting to speak with you. Thanks so much for the time today. Great. Appreciate being here. Thanks, Christine.